What he is saying to me is that I would have been right to have stayed and spoken in favour of policies coming out of Europe, destroying NATO, massive nationalisation, destruction of any private education, any private health service, moving towards a semi-East European state. That would have been all right within the tabernacle of the Labour Party. I mean, I'll be blunt with you, Roy. You talk about cancer. I feel very strongly about people whose entire life depends on the working class movement. Your father was a miner. He was in jail in the general strike. You got into Parliament as a Labour member. Every office you held was because of the Labour Party. Cabinet minister, appointed by a Labour Prime Minister, and then you left the party. Now, that's a cancerous growth. Not personally, but I think people who betray those who gave them power are the real threat, and I must say that bluntly to you, because I think that means... Now, having said that... Now, having said that... You think you're promising us Derek Hatton being leader of the Labour I'm not. I'm only saying, Roy, I'm only saying, Roy, that the people that stay true to those who put them in power, these are the people I admire, not the people who climb into power on the backs of others, kick away the ladder, and are presented by everybody as men of principle and moderate. We had this bloody war, which cost millions of lives, and then we had to decide how we reacted to Europe. And I took the view that having fought them, we should now work with them and cooperate. And that was my first thought about it. Then when I saw how the European Union was developing, it was very obvious that what they had in mind was not democratic. I mean, in Britain, you vote for a government and therefore the government has to listen to you. And if you don't like it, you can change it. But in Europe, all the key positions are appointed, not elected.